Oh my days, what an emotional roller coaster. What's up everyone, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match review of Chelsea's 4-2 win against Burnley away at Turf Moor in the Premier League, making for their seventh win in a row. Tremendous scenes and an exciting game with one American superstar taking all headlines. Epic. We saw the good, the bad, the ugly in this game, but mainly the good from Chelsea and Frank Lampard, and it was an incredibly entertaining match for the neutral, I'd like to think. We all know Turf Moor is a difficult place to go, so we're going to unhinge all the details from today's game and I'm going to talk about some player performances etc. Before I do, a quick reminder that you there subscribe to Football Therapy if you want daily Chelsea content. Subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to do your homie a favour, please do like the video. Right, Chelsea obviously come up a really positive result away in Amsterdam against Ajax, semi-finalists in the Champions League haven't lost since the semi-final last season in the Champions League, haven't lost at home for like years or something crazy, some stat. Anyway, huge result for Chelsea, but Burnley away is a very different test, as we all know, as it proved to be, but Chelsea came out on top, a few bits of naivety in there. Um, so yeah, completely different test, and I want to tell you how the game went, so let's open the analysis screen. Boom shaka. On the graphic I've put the who scored match center for all the statistics and that jargon for you to read and I'm going to run you through what happened in the game. Right after I tell you the lineup, Kepa reads the Balaga between the sticks, centre back partnership of Tamori and Zuma, uh, fullbacks Alonso and Azpilicueta, the same, 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 same midfield, Jorginho, Mount, Kovacic, very, very good, front three, Tammy Abraham, Willian, yes, yes, same, but Christian Pulisic gets his start for the first time in the Premier League since August. Deserved, intriguing, people expected it, some people didn't expect it, certainly a headline, and oh boy, what a headline. Right, so this game started with a lot of vertical sort of ticky tack at play from Chelsea. This happened a lot of the earlier stages in the game, they were playing up and down the middle, trying not to use the flanks too much and switch the play too much. They were really knocking it up and down the centre and it was retaining possession well and the one-touch football looks good from Chelsea. In the earlier stages I noticed a lot was going through William, which is pleasing to see because he'd been a little bit anonymous at times recently but a lot was going through him. He was playing the one-touch passes, very mature on the ball and running into an offensive space. He looked very good in the earlier stages. Burnley's game plan was more evident at the beginning than later in the game. They were forcing Chelsea to go long. They didn't want them to play out from the back because they knew the long balls they were going to win him all day long, and they did. Tarkovsky and me, they were winning it off at Tammy Abraham, who's a big boy, but if it wasn't him, it was Mount, and basically, that's their bread and butter. And if they weren't winning the first ball, they're winning the second ball. 21st minute, brilliant individual goal from Christian Pulisic, who basically pounces on a defensive mistake, picks up the ball, drives towards the opposition box. He had it all to do, though. He wasn't just one-on-one. -on -one. He retained possession, did a bit of dribbling, scored an excellent goal. Captain America! has arrived ladies and gentlemen and boy what a way to open your account for Chelsea Football Club he'd played pretty well when he'd been on the pitch generally um, you know he's already got a couple of Premier League assists he's generally quite a creative and selfless player but man this man wanted his goal and boy did he take it 1-0 Chelsea after the goal Chelsea endure a really really difficult spell of pressure like two one of the two difficult spells of pressure in the match from Burnley they're really knocking on the door winning a succession of corners and in the 25th minute Kepa had to make what was actually a very very difficult save from a deflected shot. Chelsea aren't really grabbing the game and I'm watching Tammy Abraham at this point going man he's actually struggling against these Burnley centre-backs as I thought he might do you know in this game. And in the 30th minute Chelsea survive another really scary moment from Burnley offensive pressure. A ball comes over and a ball comes over in the box, there's a knockdown across goal, and Barnes is running at the back post, who really would have been like a yard out to tap it in, but just misses it. Chelsea survive a scary moment there for what should have been an equaliser for Burnley. But a few minutes after, Chelsea do regain a hold of the match, and they sort of retain possession and start knocking it around again calm it down and they've weathered the storm. And in the 45th minute, Christian Pulisic doubles Chelsea's lead and he doubles his Chelsea goal tally with a driving run right down the middle, strikes the ball, gets a little bit lucky with a deflection, but hey, don't buy a ticket as they say, scores another goal, a brace for Christian Pulisic, 2-0 Chelsea. So, half time, Chelsea 2, Burnley 0. Two very different footballing approaches in this game, which is incredibly evident. 
Chelsea weren't comfortable the whole 45 minutes. I do want to say they were good for the 2-0 lead because they do create a lot of chances, Frank Lampard's Chelsea side. But they still don't look super, super secure at the back. Second half starts, no changes. In the 50th minute, Barnes hits a chance with the ball coming over the top and he hits a volley. He made a run off the shoulder. He was onside. All the Chelsea backline thought he was offside, which is really bad defensively. He thinks he has little time and he hits it first time and misses it. If he takes it down in his chest, he maybe scores a goal, an easy goal by his standards. He's actually missed three chances going begging now for Ashley Barnes. Chelsea are kind of lucky he's having a bit of an off day at this point. I want to mention at this point I'm looking at Mateo Kovacic and I'm thinking he's been magnificent at this point and these early spells of pressure from Burnley and in the latter part of the first half he was instrumental in settling the ship for Chelsea superb at making interceptions regaining possession but also dribbling out of the press as we know he does so well the way he turns and turns and turns find the pass dribbles out superb I'm going to talk about player performances at the end but I wanted to shout him out at this point 55th minute oh my god He's only gone and done it. Captain America, in under an hour, has scored a hat-trick. His first goals for Chelsea, all in 55 minutes, away at Turf Moor, horrible place to go. And the third goal is so unsuspecting. His first two were dribbling, driving runs, and then hitting the ball hard. This time, it's a glancing header from a set piece on a corner. First career hat-trick for Christian Pulisic. And boy, Chelsea needed him in this game. Superb scenes. Big up, Christian. 58th minute. Well, well, well. Looks like Willian wants to get in on the act. He got a yellow card earlier in this game, and I was thinking maybe he was fading out, but Tammy Abraham advancing with the ball, kicks it out wide. Willian gets it from about 20 yards, rifles it in. Superb goal. Chelsea 4, Burnley nil. And we're thinking, oh, we all saw that Southampton result when they shipped 9 the day before. Maybe Chelsea can score loads like Leicester did. The game takes a turn here. The ball goes up and down, things change, comes to the 62nd minute and Tomori demonstrates his defensive brilliance on a superb recovery that prevents Jay Rodriguez doing a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Great recovery pace, comes in, makes the tackle. Kepa is loving up Tomori at this point. Yes, we're saving my clean sheet. Poor Kepa, he didn't know what was coming. <laughs> Reese James comes on for Alonso. So as Piliqueta moves over to left back, Reese James comes up in at right back i can talk see and james immediately is called into action with a superb double block chelsea are under pressure now i mean they're enduring a difficult spell but they're four nil up right everything's cool right 69th minute tammy abraham comes off and Giroud gets a run out four nil up fine the third choice striker give him a chance to play chelsea do calm things down they're knocking it around burnley now they're getting the olays from the chelsea away fans everything seems cool right 72nd minute willian comes off for callum hudson odoi he scores a goal but remember he's got that yellow card and it's good to give hudson odoi a run out cho looks bright when he comes on but in the 77th minute he goes down in the penalty area now var look at it and he actually ends up getting booked for diving but he goes over a leg there's a leg put in then an argument can be made that he's pulling out i'm gonna have chelsea bias here but to me i was like yeah it's a penalty but looking back if they think he dramatically went over there he didn't even dramatically go over it i think it's a bit harsh on the kid anyway he gets a yellow it would seem chelsea are settling down the game a little bit in the following minutes until 86th minute jay rodriguez scores an immense what i thought at the time was one consolation goal from long range it was a superb goal and i'm thinking man poor kepper at this point 4-1 chelsea and then in the 89th minute chelsea concede again a long range 20 yard goal maybe from mcneil uh, basically capitalise off a deflection off Tamori and it goes in and Kepa is fuming. He was a 4-0 up cruising clean sheet man and now the goals are flooding in. Both Kepa and Rhys James are absolutely screaming at their teammates at this point and there is an unsettled feeling of Chelsea. Suddenly they're looking like the young naive side that they can often be. But Chelsea do see out the final four minutes of stoppage time in this game and they win 4-2. Right? Emotional roller coaster. Let's get rid of this analysis screen. Right, let's run through player performances or certainly notable ones. Starting with Kepa Rita Balaga. I feel pretty bad for him, man, because he did make a good save in this game. And generally, his passing with his centre backs was very, very good. He felt a sort of, I guess, a bit let down by his players, but I think he was generally pretty good in this game. Alonso, man, I I'm reluctant to praise Alonso, not because of hatred towards him just because i don't feel like he sits suits the mold for a conventional left back but he looks better and better i think because he's so tall and the way he moves when he's protecting the ball he looks so slow but he, he was good before he came off man so 
props to Alonso again. As for Laqueta was serviceable at right back, I mean, after his Ajax game, he was probably pretty drained because he was imperious in that game. A little bit quieter in this game, but, you know, decent. Both centre-backs were pretty good. Tomori showed how good his recovery pace is. Generally, the set play defending isn't great still, and the two goals, I think the whole Chelsea defence was all at sea. Zuma did get a bit of a whack on the head early doors, which might have shaken his play a little bit, but Tomori did obviously do that great recovery run, so mm, decent from both of them. Jorginho was excellent again for me. I keep saying he's like Mr. Consistency now, what Azpilicueta used to be. He did make one wayward pass that was notable. We were like, oh, Jorginho's given the ball away. But other than that, he was superb, metronomic on the ball, passing it to the far corner, switching play well, and basically being very lucid to all players as per usual. And Kovacic, like I said, big fan of Kovacic, superb in this game. Very good at dribbling out of the press, press resistant. He was making more and more interceptions as he used to be. Great at driving uh, forward in the final third, progressing the ball. The day that man scores a goal, I'm going to run down the street naked. Mason Mount, very, very good in this game, man. Again, you, so, you see how different he is to pull Pulisic. Pulisic, well Mount and Pulisic both can play on the wing and in the number 10, but they're very very different man. Mount's very sort of pokey and direct and Pulisic is, likes to retain the ball, dribble and combine, but I feel like Mount was very threatening and aggressive in this game and direct and he looked very very good, he got an assist. Superb, good to see him playing like he was in the beginning of the season. Willian, pretty good, started very very well, scored an excellent goal which obviously offered that comfort scoreline in the end. Got a booking, but it was a tactical booking. I think he was pretty good, Willian, in this game and deserves props. Tammy Abraham, pretty down good. He was a bit anonymous. I mean, I felt bad for him because of the way he was being marshaled by both centre-backs, but he did get the assist. He wasn't selfish when William was running. He did the right thing and run his heart out, so he did well, Tammy. Let's talk about the substitutes before we talk about the main man. Rhys James actually looked very, very good when he came on, and I do maintain he will be Chelsea's starting right-back before the end of the season, just because he looks so threatening and he's got it all. Hudson Adoy, I think it went to his head a little bit there, getting books when he didn't really dive. He did look threatening, but he didn't get a chance to demonstrate his ability that much, so a little bit anonymous. Olivier Giroud, bless him, man. The more I watch him, I know he's a superb player. I know what he offers is very, very good, and I can understand why Didier Deschamps loves him so much, but it really doesn't look like Giroud suits Lampard's football at all like at all. Captain America, Christian Pulisic, superb man. He really demonstrated his ability today. Um, and he's, even though he scored a hat trick, he wasn't selfish in this game. He was constantly trying to look to assist people, play people in. <laughs> he scored a glancing header from a set piece, man. 10 out of 10 rating Christian Pulisic. I don't really need to say anything else. Superb. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the player performances and this game in general. Get down in the comment section. Remember, like the video if you want to help me out and subscribe if you're new to the channel and follow me on social media at Football Yannick at Football Yannick on Instagram and Twitter. I'm out, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.